We're on. Hi guys! This is Mickey at Fun Hills Fibers and I'm here today to talk about spinning silk hankies. Uh, silk hankies are one of those things that spinners are often afraid to try, but they're actually quite easy, so I'm here to show you how to do it. We're going to try today spinning silk hankies on a beaded support spindle. These spindles were made using my Funhouse Fibers Make Your Own Beaded Support Spindle Tutorial, which you can find on the Fat Fiber Secret site or on funhousefibers.com. So what are silk hankies? Silk hankies are uh, layers of individual silk cocoons that have been stretched over a frame uh, after they're washed. So they actually dry in the shape of a hanky, which is why they're called silk hankies. But they're actually layers and layers and layers of silk cocoons. Silk cocoons take dye beautifully, as you can see by these gorgeous colors. They have the shine of silk, but they're nowhere near as difficult to spin as Tussle Silk Top or things, other preparations of silk. So uh, let's get down to the how do I spin silk hankies portion of this video. So, silk hankies come, as I said, in layers and layers, and the way that you'll start preparing your fiber for spinning is you'll take the silk hankies, and even this, which looks like three silk hankies, is actually about ten silk hankies. So go, so go to a corner where you can see them kind of separating, and as you can see, if my cameraman will zoom in here, um, all these little really thin uh, layers at the corner. See all those? There's probably, oh, at least a dozen right there. So I'm going to take one layer off the very top and peel it back. And it's kind of uh, super, super thin. Almost looks like a piece of, oh, I don't know, insulation or something like that, only silk. And as you can see, some of this silk fiber has uh, some lumps and bumps and that's because silk hankies are uh, made from silk cocoons that were rejected in the process of preparing silk for silk reeling. That's how you get really fine silk yarn. Um, these silk cocoons may have had holes in them or be been misshapen but for spinners purposes this is perfect because we want to have texture. So we're going to take this fine, fine layer of silk hanky and I'll take my two thumbs. You can see I'm kind of stretching it out in between my two hands. I'll take my thumbs and I'll poke a hole in the middle. And then I'll start, I'll put my hand in and I'll start to stretch out that hanky and it becomes a circle. Um, I'm going to continue drafting out this circle of basically pencil roaming between my hands. And if I have problems drafting, that's because I'm holding my hands too close together. Uh, this is still silk, which means it has a very long staple. So if you find yourself having problems pre-drafting, um, try putting your hands further apart, and that should help you. So I'm going to draft this out um, almost to the diameter of the, yarn, the finished yarn that I'm going to spin. Since this is a textured yarn, I'm not going to draft it out uh, super fine. I'm going to leave some of that texture in there. But when you're spinning silk hankies, all the drafting is done before you spin your yarn. You're not going to be drafting during the spinning unless you're evening out uh, an area that has a slob that you want to uh, work on. So I'll continue drafting out this fiber. Uh, it's getting pretty thin now, so I can go ahead and break this circle of pencil roving. And then I'm going to wind it on to my fiber supply side hand um, in a circle. And it becomes kind of like a little bird's nest of fiber. So there you can see my pencil roving all ready to spin. Let me put this aside and uh, talk about the support spindle for just a moment. Uh, support spindles are meant to spin really fast. They're great for fine fibers, including silk hankies. They'll make this really easy for you, and you can use a lot of these same techniques when you move on to trying this on your spinning wheel. So, um, on my support spindle, the twist is happening when I'm twirling the spindle and dropping it. So, I'm twirling my spindle, 
and each time the yarn uh, or fiber flicks off this pointy tip here, it's adding in twist. So that's why it's great to have um, support spindles that go really fast, and these beaded spindles go really fast. So let me show you how to make a leader. I'm going to take my uh, cocoon of pencil roving, and I'm going to take about a foot or 10 inches of pencil roving and start twirling it with my fingers in the direction that I'll be spinning my single, which would be um, which would be a Z twist, I think. <laughs> so I'll be adding twist in the end because I want to make this my leader. And uh, even though it's long staple and it's not really going to fall apart, I still want to have some twist in there at the beginning. I'll add a little more twist with my thigh, so I'll roll it down my thigh and get that first few inches of pencil roving um, really nice and stable. And then I'll take the end and I'll tie it onto the bottom of my support spindle. Just tie this in a knot here. Uh, it's not really that difficult. You'll develop your own style. And then I'll take uh, the portion of the spindle where I've tied that little knot and I will kind of help it along. I'll wrap over that knot so it doesn't just start winding around and around and around and wind on the first few inches of yarn. Then I'll support my spindle and I'll twirl uh, the spindle in my fingers and not let it go. You can see I'm kind of holding it in a circle in between all my fingers twirling it really fast, adding in twist. You can see this yarn is kind of on the slubby side, which I love. So I'm adding in twist, I'm not really drafting. If I do want to draft and um, even out a slub, I'll put down my spindle. You don't have to worry about it rolling away. And grab the pencil roving in between my two hands, firmly on both sides, and Maybe untwist it a little if it's already got some twist started in it and gently pull. That'll help you even out your roving. Go back to spinning. Let your spin will go really fast. And when you've reached the end of your arm, you can't reach anymore. Oh, look, it's windy here. Um, I'll put down my spindle and I'll take my fiber supply hand and you can do this with one hand and still have your spindle in the other wrap the single around my two fingers like so that uh, kind of helps control or contain my singles and wind onto my spindle wind the, wind the cop which is your uh, yarn that you're going to be building up on your support spindle you support spindles will know these terms but if you're unfamiliar with that there's a great book um, written by Abby Frankmont um, called Respect the Spindle and she has lots of uh, great information on support spindling too. Anyway, I'm adding in more twist. I'm having a little trouble here because of the wind, but hey, this is this is live video, so wind on again. And there you go. How easy was that? Not difficult at all. Um, so if you have any other questions. You can uh, email me at funnygirl at funhousefibers.com or find me on Ravelry as Funhouse. Um, try spinning silk hankies. It's really fun, and I know you can do this. Thanks for watching.